Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. This video features two counting problems and tricks you should know. Problem one. In a singles tennis tournament, there are 100 players. Each match pairs two players. The winner advances and the loser is eliminated. Assuming a minimum number of buys, these are games in which a player automatically advances due to no opponent, how many matches are needed to determine a tournament winner? This problem is asked in many, many different contexts. It was once asked on the SAT. It was asked as an Olympiad qualifier. I've seen it in many, many tests. It's a problem that you should know how to solve. Problem two. The Putnam competition is an annual exam for undergraduate students in the United States and Canada. There are three hours to solve six problems for an average of 30 minutes per problem. And then there are another three hours to solve another six problems for a total of six hours for 12 questions. Each question is worth 10 points for a maximum of 120 points. But the average or median score is about one point even though the students taking the competition are exceptional at math. Today's video is about a 1985 Putnam question A1. Calculate the number of ordered triples A1, comma, A2, comma, A3, such that their union is the integers from 1 to 10, and their intersection is the empty set. Express your answer in the form 2 to the a multiplied by 3 to the b multiplied by 5 to the c multiplied by 7 to the d, where a, b, c, and d are non-negative integers. Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. Let's solve problem one. I'll first illustrate the long way to solve this in which you count the number of matches that are played round by round. So there are 100 players. So we'll count the number of matches and the number of players left in each round. In the first round, 100 players can be paired into 50 different matches. 50 other players will be eliminated. So 100 minus 50 will leave 50 players. The remaining 50 players can be paired up into 50 over 2, which equals 25 matches. Each of these matches will have one player eliminated, so 25 players will be eliminated, and that means 50 minus 25 equals 25 players left. How many matches will be played in the next round? 25 is an odd number, so we can only get up to 24 players that are paired. So 24 players can be paired into 12 matches. In these 12 matches, exactly one player will be eliminated in each match. So then 12 players will be eliminated. The number of players left will be 25 minus 12, which equals 13. Again, we have an odd number, so we can pair up 12 of the 13. So that will be into six different matches. Now six players will be eliminated. So then 13 minus six will leave seven players left. We can now have six of the players paired up into three matches. Three players will be eliminated. Seven minus three equals four. We can now pair up these four players into two matches. This will leave two players left. Finally, the two players play in the championship game and exactly one player will be left. That's the champion. So the total number of matches played is the sum of the matches in this column. So we take 50 plus 25 plus 12 plus 6 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, and that is 99 matches. And that is the answer. But this is the long way to do it. We could actually solve it in a very short way using logical thinking. So here's how it works. In every match, exactly one player loses and gets eliminated. There is one champion who never loses and the other 99 players who get eliminated. For 99 players to be eliminated, there must be 99 matches. 
Therefore, there are 99 matches to determine the winner. The great thing about this solution is you can even generalize. If there's a single elimination tournament with N players, then you will need N minus one matches. What a wonderful trick. Now let's solve problem two. Let's work through it step by step. Suppose we have a number from the integers going from one to 10. We need to assign this number to A1 or A2 or A3 or some combination of these sets. So this number could be in set A1 or not in set A1. It could be in set A2 or not in set A2. It could be in set A3 or not in set A3. So there are two choices for the first set, two choices for the second set, and two choices for the third set. We multiply these together to get two to the power of three, which equals eight possibilities. But we need to remove some of the possibilities. We know we can't have X in all three sets because the intersection needs to be the empty set. So we subtract out one possibility. We also subtract out the possibility that X is not in A1, A2, or A3 because we need it to be in one of the three sets so that their union is all of the numbers going from one to 10. So we subtract two possibilities from eight and that gives us six possibilities. Now there's a nice way to visualize this. Let's say we have three sets, A1, A2, and A3. Normally we would draw the logical relationships between these three sets as follows but we want the intersection of all three sets to be the empty set. So this region where all three circles intersects needs to be the empty set. So we'll just slightly redraw this diagram so that region doesn't exist. We'll pull these circles apart and now the circles just intersect at a point and there's nothing in the interior between all three circles. So how many regions are there? We have one region which is A1 minus A2 minus A3 Another region is A2 minus A1 minus A3. A third region is A3 minus A1 minus A2. Then we have the intersection of A1 and A2, the intersection of A1 and A3, and the intersection of A2 and A3. This makes for a total of six regions. So now let's solve the problem. The number of ordered triples, A1, A2, A3, is equal to the number of ways to partition the whole numbers from one to 10 into six disjoint subsets. There are six possibilities for each of the 10 numbers, meaning six to the power of 10 possibilities. Six is equal to two times three, so that gives us six to the power of 10 is equal to two to the power of 10 multiplied by three to the power of 10, and that's the answer. If you like this video, you may also like some of the other Putnam competition questions I've covered over the years. There are links to each of these in the video description. Do you have a favorite Putnam competition question that I haven't covered yet? Please let us know in a comment or by sending me an email. I definitely consider all interesting problem suggestions. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.